Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Sunday, August 18th, 2024, and today we are going to be talking about the 2024 presidential election and the amount of support that Donald Trump has lost since the entrance of Vice President Kamala Harris in the race for President of the United States. Now, you might have been seeing a lot of articles talking about Kamala Harris putting many states back into play. You might have been seeing the mainstream media coverage about Kamala Harris really gaining swing state momentum and doing very well across these states. And I will admit, I have absolutely partaken in that because that has been the fact of the matter over the past month. Since Joe Biden dropped out of the race, it has been a clear and consistent trend line here that Kamala Harris is moving in a positive direction, that she's doing better than Biden did. She's raising more money than Biden did. She's bringing in more campaign volunteers than Biden did. She's drawing in larger crowds than Biden did. And it was all around Kamala, Kamala, Kamala. But on the flip side, one thing that hasn't been covered as much and one something that I do want us to talk about is the fact of the matter that Donald Trump is the person who has lost support since Kamala Harris has became the Democratic nominee for president. And the reason why this matters is because just a month ago, when Joe Biden was in the presidential race, a lot of us had been working under this assumption that this was Donald Trump's race to lose, that Donald Trump was the person who was going to do so well because everybody was predicting it. The mainstream political pundits, people like Nate Silver and Harry Enten, and people who are popularized on the mainstream media, alongside a lot of the data, the points that we were getting in, fundraising numbers that showed very positive results for Donald Trump, polling numbers that showed even more positive results for Donald Trump. Every metric was pointing towards a second Trump term. And so when Kamala Harris came into the fray and became the Democratic nominee, all of these surges in favor of Kamala Harris have largely been seen as a very positive thing for Kamala Harris, and rightfully so. She has done well. She has gained support. She has built momentum and maintained it over the past month. But at the same time, in the past three weeks, we have seen one of the most ineffective Republican campaigns in modern history, in direct contrast with the way the Trump campaign had been ran for the entire year leading up to Kamala Harris entering into the race. Well, I think is also a good indication for Democrats isn't just that Kamala Harris is building momentum, but rather that Donald Trump is losing support across the United States when juxtaposed with Kamala Harris. This is an article from the Financial Times. It's titled, Pennsylvania is slipping from Donald Trump's grasp. And that is entirely accurate. When you take a look at where Kamala Harris is making improvements upon, she is doing damage to Donald Trump's lead. She is taking it away, not only by building herself up, but by chipping him down. And it shows that Donald Trump is absolutely losing ground. Not that he's maintaining where he is today and that Kamala Harris is doing even better. But he is, in fact, losing some support to Kamala Harris in a way that had never happened under President Biden. And that is massive for the Democratic Party. Because it means that Donald Trump is no longer this person who can be seen as this untouchable Republican candidate, somebody who many Democrats had really worried about, that he would be too strong of the Republican nominee in 2024, and not because you know he was a strong candidate on his own, but rather because he was up against Joe Biden. That Donald Trump, because he's someone who's roughly the same age as Joe Biden, but can debate seemingly better. We saw that in 2024. He won that first debate. He can do more rallies. He's more energetic. He's more put together in the eyes of the American voter. That is the way that people perceived Donald Trump. And that's why many Democrats were worried. Because it was sort of as if, you know, if they knew they were running against someone like Nikki Haley, they would have known that election would be far harder to win for Joe Biden. But they wouldn't see her as the more extreme Republican nominee for president. The concern here was for Democrats that Donald Trump was the more extreme Republican who ended up doing so well because he was juxtaposed with Joe Biden. But now that Joe Biden's out of the fray and Republicans spent the past three and a half years characterizing Joe Biden as senile, characterizing Joe Biden as unable to serve out the oath of office, they have spent all this time and effort under this assumption that Joe Biden would be the one running for re-election. And now that it is Kamala Harris, they really have far less to run on. And that's a problem. Donald Trump is losing ground in these battleground states, especially on the national level, too. Donald Trump against Kamala Harris has 46.7% of the vote. Against Joe Biden, that number was 47.9%, almost 48% nationwide. Why does that matter? Well, it shows that Donald Trump has lost one, two points since Kamala Harris has became the Democratic nominee for president, and that Kamala Harris is gained support compared to Joe Biden from 48.8, 44.8 rather, to 48.1. One could reasonably argue that some of those independent voters who at one point in time swayed towards Trump now sway towards Harris. That is a massive victory. 
And what I was also thinking about, too, when we looked at those battleground state numbers for uh, Kamala Harris against Donald Trump, according to The New York Times, we saw, sure, she was putting four Rust Belt states back into play. It was a massive, massive gain compared to where Don Joe Biden was. But that is, again, not only a testament to Kamala Harris's electability, but equally to Donald Trump being an unlikable figure. This morning, the Washington Post and ABC News released their poll, a very strong poll, one of the most respected ones in the nation, showing Donald Trump at negative 17 nationwide for favorability. That is one of the lowest points that Donald Trump has been in. And the reason why is because in American politics, as much as history tells us that campaigns have been about individual candidates and not about comparison, the past three cycles, 2016, 2020, and now 2024, have been exactly about comparison. Which is why Kamala Harris, despite being a vice president who hit her lowest level of approval just days before Joe Biden dropped into the race, lowest level, let me say that again, lowest levels of approval days before Donald, Joe Biden dropped out of the race. Today, she stands with her highest approval since 2021 in just under a month. Why? Because voters, sure, got to see a new side of Kamala Harris, but a side that was directly in contrast with that of Donald Trump. Since she entered into the race, what has happened? Donald Trump's approvals have gone down. The Democratic campaign didn't change the way that they attacked Donald Trump. They've been attacking him for the same way this entire cycle. But it is something about the way it lands when the direct opposition looks more sensible. And in this case, that is Kamala Harris. And so when we take a look at some of these data points that shows that Donald Trump was doing so well against Joe Biden after that first debate, the lead expanded to six points nationwide. Today, on average, Kamala Harris is up 1.4%. And again, that brand new poll today shows Kamala Harris up six points, according to the ABC News and Washington Post, amongst likely voters. That's a group that historically Democrats do not do well with. And so to see Kamala Harris doing that well goes to show that this six-point lead that Trump had amongst likely voters, now translating to a six-point lead amongst Kamala Harris, means Donald Trump has certainly lost support because he went from 49%, 49%, to far less in the brand new polls that we've seen. And in terms of the battleground states, it gets even worse. When we're taking a look at the way that uh, Democrats and Republicans and independents interact with the swing state polls, Kamala Harris is doing far, far better. When we take a look at the data against Joe Biden, Donald Trump led him in every single state except for Wisconsin. And by massive margins in Arizona, seven points, seven points in Michigan, 10 points in Georgia, 12 points in Nevada. We are in a very different predicament. And the reason being, Donald Trump has lost crucial support groups in these battleground states. Because against Joe Biden, many of these independents saw Donald Trump as an alternative that they didn't want to vote for, but they did not believe that Joe Biden should be in office for another four years. After that first presidential debate, that's exactly what the narrative was. That although many independents and even Republicans who were never Trumpers, who genuinely believed that Joe Biden may have been better in 2020, but couldn't bring the thumbs to vote for him in 2024 and were instead voting for Donald Trump because they still wanted a Republican in office, they now have another option where the arguments that have been made by Republicans that Joe Biden is not fit, that Joe Biden should not serve, that Joe Biden cannot be in this office are claims and you know things that have been said that no longer land because this age issue is a non-issue. This concern around mental acuity is a non-issue. All of these different things that Republicans, again, built up as their one reliable go-to issue, Joe Biden can't talk, Joe Biden can't debate, Joe Biden can't govern. That is the way Republicans brandished this campaign, and for a while, it was working. But it is evident, clear as day now, that Donald Trump's campaign did not have a plan B. That without Joe Biden, they've lost their leverage that they've had over these battleground state voters. It wasn't as if Donald Trump was at 45% and Joe Biden was at 38 Sure, there were some polls that said that. But at large, Donald Trump was sometimes polling 49, 50% in these battleground states, never really crossing that majority threshold, which was a good sign for Democrats, but he was so exceptionally close. Now, even in his winning numbers, he doesn't cross that majority threshold. And that matters. Georgia being the best performing at 50%. But Kamala Harris gaining ground means Donald Trump has certainly been chopped down a block on some of these battleground states. When you take a look at the data of him versus Biden in Arizona, from 49 today down to 45. That's a four-point reduction, and a lot of that support has gone to Vice President Harris, going from where Biden was at at 42 to 50 for Kamala Harris. That's an eight-point difference. All of this can be summarized under really, really just a few things. 
that Donald Trump has lost support and Kamala Harris has gained and built off of it. And that is the way this election really has been going for the past month. But we cannot ignore that it is Donald Trump himself who has put themselves uh, and his campaign really in this difficult position. When you take a look at a lot of the things that could have been prevented, right? Who Donald Trump chose as vice president, he could have vetted entirely different people. He could have had a much better selection process. He could have decided to go ahead and just take it and nominate Nikki Haley as vice president, and we would be in a very different position today. Because I do believe that on the large scale, vice presidential picks do not change things that much. But against a race like this, especially when it was Joe Biden and the only thing new to the race was the vice presidential contender, J.D. Vance was the wrong guy for the wrong time. J.D. Vance is not the VP nominee that brings Donald Trump over the finish line. If anything, he hinders him. And so Donald Trump made a number of missteps, I think largely because they were under this assumption, this plan A assumption, that it was only and always going to be Joe Biden as the Democratic nominee, that it was always going to be an age issue election and nothing more, that he was in a position for a landslide victory, especially after the assassination attempt. The amount of Democrats we saw online dooming and glooming saying that this attempt, while condemning it, was also going to have severe electoral implications that were going to damage the Democratic Party's chances at victories. And a week later, Kamala Harris enters into the race and the media narrative is entirely different. Things feel very differently for both sides of the aisle than they did a month ago. Things feel very differently than they did when Joe Biden was under the presidential nomination. And that's because this race has really shaken up. But it is Donald Trump who has led his campaign really to failure on many parts because of the fact there was no contingency plan in the event that Joe Biden dropped out of the race. Leaked internal documentation to the press showed that the Republican campaign had been, in theory, prepping for it since as early as May, but never believed it was going to happen. And so followed through with everything standard, convention standard, debate standard, the way they interact with the campaign standard. In no circumstance did they expect Joe Biden actually to drop out of the race. And yet he did. On top of that, Donald Trump is firing back at some of his major donors. We talked about this. The New York Times covered it. The worst three weeks of Donald Trump's presidential campaign of this cycle have happened over the past month. Donald Trump has seen some of the worst news pieces written about this election. Donald Trump has seen some of the worst polling data points that he has seen of this election, some of the worst fundraising numbers that he has seen of this election. Because Kamala Harris has brought something new to the Democratic ticket. What Tim Walls calls joy, we see largely in senses of enthusiasm. And voters feel more confident around Kamala Harris now. Overall, people feel very positively around Kamala Harris being the Democratic nominee. 44% of Americans say they're satisfied with Kamala Harris being the nominee for president this year. Amongst Democrats, that tripled from 20% to 60%. Republicans are less satisfied, and I honestly think that's because some Republicans believe Kamala Harris is the wrong person for the time, but also because they're afraid of losing to her. And amongst independents and those who affiliate other, 19% to 30%. On the large scale, Kamala Harris brings to this ticket rather than detracts, in the same way that we saw Tim Walls now bring to Kamala Harris's ticket in the way that J.D. Vance retracts from Donald Trump's ticket. This election has been very focused recently on Kamala Harris's fortunes, on Kamala Harris expanding, on Kamala Harris doing well, and that is arguably the correct take, because that's what the data points show no matter what way you cut it. Equally, it is Donald Trump who was in a position a month ago where this was his race to lose, where it was Donald Trump who was leading in all of these battleground states, where it was Donald Trump who was going to demolish Joe Biden according to the metrics we looked at. Record-breaking numbers after the mugshot was released in 2023. Record-breaking numbers when he became a convicted felon in May of 2024. Record-breaking numbers after the assassination attempt. And so many different things, so many different things that Donald Trump had going for him no longer are going for him today. Enthusiasm from Gen Z completely flipped. Losing the bleeding to de losing support uh, Democrats losing support, bleeding support amongst minority voters no longer happening today. Kamala Harris has been this band-aid that has fixed many of the problems within the Democratic Party that they were facing this election. While a band-aid can certainly be ripped off by the right guy, Donald Trump is no doctor. And Donald Trump is not in a position where he's going to be able to do really substantive damage over the next 80 days, less than, before the election to completely change the trajectory of this race. And that is the problem for the Republican Party at large. Donald Trump is not the right guy to meet this moment. It could have been Nikki Haley. It could have been another Republican. 
But because this entire election, Republicans and Democrats alike were working under the assumption it was Joe Biden as the Democratic nominee, and that was the end-all, be-all. And even when there was an inclination that Joe Biden might drop out of the race, Republicans didn't prep. They didn't strategize. They didn't get ready for a doomsday scenario in which the nominee is replaced and Democrats end up doing so well. And that's exactly what has been happening now. So Donald Trump, having no plan of reaction, ended up doing exactly what the campaign on the Democratic side would want and started tanking his own campaign out of fear, out of worry, out of concern, going crazier than normal, going more radical than normal, saying outlandish things, questioning Kamala Harris's racial identity, doing all of these different things that make his election much, much, much harder than it otherwise would have been. And Democrats look at this and say, that's the Donald Trump we know, and that's the Donald Trump they want for this election cycle. And so they have gotten it. And so Donald Trump has lost tremendous support across key and crucial battleground states as Kamala Harris gains it. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the top left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2024 presidential election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all tomorrow.